So recently, I flew all the way to the States for the launch of Vision Pro, Apple's very first mobile headset. It marks the beginning of a new era and the nearing end of another. This may sound uh, crazy, but in the future, our phone, tablet, TV, laptop and computer are built into a single pair of small farm glasses. In this review, I will give you a glimpse into this upcoming lifestyle. I will show you what the Apple Vision can do, from calling your friends in avatar form, to transforming your home into a lifelike cinema, and watching your photos and videos in 3D, to setting up a next level workspace. Because uh, where we are heading, we don't need physical screens. So I was one of the first in line to pick up their Vision Pro on launch day. And it's amazing to see how anyone can just walk into one of the many Apple stores to request a demo. You don't even need to purchase one to experience it. Since the Vision is modular, employees can help you choose the right size uh, head strap and light seal using an iPhone or iPad. Of course, you can also do this from your home and have it delivered straight to your house. The starting price is uh, $3,499, giving you 256 gigs of storage and for now is only available in America. Once back in my Airbnb, it was time for the unboxing. Inside the sleek package, I found my Vision Pro with its protective cover still attached, a quick start guide, a cleaning cloth, thick face cushion, an additional overhead strap, the external battery and equipment to charge. At first glance, the Vision Pro looks small and premium, making clear this is not a toy. Behind the curved glass sit tons of cameras and sensors that you can do a lot of cool things with. Most would say it's a virtual reality headset that emulates augmented reality through a camera feed. For example, Meta named this mixed reality, but in Apple's eyes, VR and AR are one entity and don't need to be differentiated, calling it spatial computing. So the moment you strap on the headset, it automatically boots up. The setup process is nearly frictionless. The Vision searches for your iPhone or iPad and creates a special pairing code that it then wants to scan. Since it pairs to your uh, Apple ID, all your iCloud data is automatically being transferred, making it instantly feel like your personal device. Adjusting the lenses is another thing you don't have to worry about. As it has eye tracking built in, it measures your eyes and finds the perfect setting tailored to you. Next to that, it does a quick hand scan, simulating an outline so that they can be overlaid on top of everything you control. After you went uh, through the setup, you are being met with what Apple calls your home view, which uh, runs on Vision OS, their first spatial operating system. That's right, there is no room setup at all. It scans everything in real time. You can look at the apps with your eyes and then launch them by pinching your fingers. If they're in reach, you can swipe uh, through them as well or even faster by asking Siri. There is also this keyboard that works with your hands and eyes too. You can just look at the keys and type super fast. The tracking volume is wide, so you can also just casually rest your hands on your lap and navigate that way. You can drag your apps anywhere you want and they will stay there. Even the ceiling will do the trick. You can make them smaller or bigger by looking at the corners and then releasing them to your preferred size. You can walk out of the room and return moments later to see they're still there. And the window those you open naturally adapt to what's behind them and cast the shadows on the surface. All the notifications you usually get on your phone show up in your view and browsing through the App Store is easier than ever. If you want to download something, all you got to do is look at an app and will automatically make a purchase by scanning your eyeballs. Besides some unresponsive applications and Vision OS crashing on me twice, performance on the Pro has been great. It's snappy and runs multiple apps without any issues. Not surprising as it's powered by a brand new R1 chip that was made specifically for the Vision, supported by an M2 seen in MacBooks. When you look up, a small grey arrow appears that summons the control center. This shows stuff like battery life, travel mode and a special guest feature. The last lets you choose what people are allowed to see. So far, I'm very impressed with Apple Vision's UI and ecosystem. It won't take you much time to understand it, because it already feels familiar. Combined with the hand and eye tracking, it reduces friction and makes using a headset a seamless and engaging experience to those who aren't deep into tech. It's miles ahead of 
anything I have ever experienced on other headsets and could be called Vision Pro's first killer app. Anyhow, as you know, the headset comes with an external battery that slides right into your pocket. It weighs 353 grams and, as far as I could test, supports up to 3 to 3.5 three hours of general use, which is decent. As the size and weight is similar to that of my phone, I don't mind wearing it. I have a funny feeling actually that some of Vision's current components will be transferred to the battery in the future, making it lighter over time. For now, having to rock a battery is not bad. That is, if you're wearing the right outfit. Additionally, you can buy a $50 battery holder that you can clip to your trousers and skirt. Or in case you wear a dress, can be used as a crossbody as well. The annoying part is that since the headset doesn't use an inbuilt battery, it has to turn itself off each time you want to hot swap. The easier but more immersion breaking option is to plug it into the wall. The biggest downside is the battery not being attached like a MagSafe, but instead locks itself in place with a turn and twist mechanism. I've already dragged my headset behind me multiple times because I forgot the battery was still in my pocket. Oh, and uh, yes, the Vision Pro can definitely survive a drop. It's well built. Putting on the headset using its knitted band is easy and self-explanatory. You turn the dial until it starts cupping your head. It's great how its design leaves room to accommodate all hairstyles and that you can just lean back on the couch to watch a movie or sports game. The face cushions fit well, are soft and have caused me no skin irritation. Since the strap and the light seal are tailored to you, it does mean you have to buy additional ones for your family or team members. After just 10 minutes or so, I can already start feeling the weight of the headset pushing down on my forehead, nose and cheekbones. I don't think the headset is necessarily heavy, it's the strap that's bad. There is no counterweight to balance out the 650 gram vision. Yeah, so it didn't take long for me to switch it out for the other headband that loops over top. This one doesn't look as cool but does beat the headband in comfort. The vision remains front heavy but does extend your tolerance to being able to wear it for more than an hour before you start feeling it again. I am surprised you don't get better premium comfort for the price you pay, being one of Vision's most disappointing aspects. Let's say you wear glasses, then you can get optical inserts by Zeiss. These can be magnetically attached over the lenses and are fine-tuned to your prescription, costing around a hundred bucks. My favorite accessory is by far the protective travel case. Its puffy material reminds me of astronauts and just like a trip to the moon is expensive, sitting at two hundred dollars. The pass through on Vision is currently the best on the market. The footage shown here is being recorded at a lower quality than what you see inside the headset and with the foveated rendering kicking in, it's hard to show it off in its full glory. The distance between what you see through the headset versus where you think uh, things are in real life match up quite well. It's natural enough to use it for long durations without feeling motion sick or needing to adapt to the actual world afterwards. It has a high dynamic range and if you want the pass-through to be brighter or darker, you choose one of the filters in the environments tab. If you don't hold things up too close, you can read text on your phone, authenticate a login via your iPad or check your watch too. But what's the point when all of this can now be done from within the headset, right? It is more relevant to daily chores you have to do in between sessions of entertainment and productivity. You probably seen people use it in the weirdest places outdoors, using it as a fashion item. But in reality, beyond pass-through, most apps on Vision are not built to track themselves during long distances on foot or staying in your view like a heads-up display. That said, future headsets will be able to do that and so much more. What this social media hype did do is help to normalize seeing people wearing a headset outside. I also don't want to sound too positive. Its pass-through still suffers from chromatic aberration and has a subtle grain effect. When the sun sets, you're introduced to motion blur and even more noise. What's nuts is that the hand tracking still functions when the lights are off. I know Apple hates me for saying this, but there is VR too. On Vision, they use the words immersive environments. The digital crown on top of the headset serves as a gateway between different realities, letting you choose whether you want to be in your home, somewhere in between or fully immersed. 
I still can't get used to the fact I can now see my real hands inside VR. It's like being part of a holodeck. To stay aware of your surroundings, a portal will show up of anyone that tries to get near you. In case you're on the road, you can enable travel mode that lets you do all of this and more while in a car, train or aircraft. It's clearly a feature that hasn't been fully fleshed out yet. It should be stabilizing what you see, but I've only experienced a jumpy Vision OS that sometimes even completely flies out of the window when the driver takes a turn. When it does kind of work, you can really see where we're going with this and how it can expand your physical space to an endless sea of opportunities. Welcome to the future. The audio that comes out of the speakers is phenomenal by the way. Since it's uh, spatial, it can tell you exactly where sounds are coming from even when you're not looking at them. The speaker's ray tracing analyzes your room acoustic properties to adapt and match audio to your space, like an expensive surround sound installation. If you want to use your AirPods Pro and or Max, then that's not a problem either. They are optimized for vision, featuring lossless audio with ultra low latency. I noticed that wearing headphones with the knitted band actually creates extra support, making it more comfy to wear. Oh, and uh, before I forget, Here's what the microphone sounds like. This is what the microphone of the Vision Pro sounds like in pass-through. And this, this is what it sounds like in a immersive environment. As you can see, being fully or halfway into VR, things are truly breathtaking. The resolution of this headset is the greatest I've seen to date. The OLED panels sharing 23 million pixels are a pleasure to look at. The environments and screens are so crisp, the colors are popping and the sense of depth you get is astonishing. It makes the pass-through look bad by comparison. Just like the design, the field of view does feel like you're looking through a ski mask, but so far my eyes have not perceived it as being immersion breaking. In the entertainment department, there are plenty of apps that let you fully enjoy this resolution. Some digitally dim your room and cast lights into your space like a real screen. On Apple TV and Disney Plus, you even have themed environments that create an extra dimension to what you're watching. You can eat the popcorn on top of Avengers Tower, overlooking new New York City, drink soda in a speeder on Tatooine or pick your own chair in a classy cinema. It's able to remember your seat and place you right back to where you left off. Watching traditional YouTube videos, movies, sports or series is amazing, but films in 3D are in a league of their own and so are documentaries and concerts shot in 180. It's mind-blowing how these can come to life in front of you. It looks as good as going to the real gig and better than the TV you currently own. If you want, you can also play games on it. Apple Arcade lets you dive into casual titles that use your hands to control them. I'm going to be honest, some stuff is just straight up gimmicky, while other apps show that there is definitely more to them. It's basically a huge playground for developers experimenting what game genres work best. It's incredible that the Vision can even run 2D games natively. It's powerful enough to pull off titles like Disney Dreamlight Valley and NBA 2K, serving as a gaming PC you can wear on your face. All you gotta do is connect your controller over Bluetooth and play your favorite games on a giant screen with zero latency. If that's not enough, the headset supports Steam Link, Xbox Game Pass and Miracast. To make it more social, you can even decide to call your friends on FaceTime or Discord and asking them to join the party. Now, if you're looking to specifically play more hardcore and fast-paced VR games, then this is of course not the device for you right now. I have already seen developers successfully run Steam VR on Vision, but let's be realistic. For most consumers, the Quest is a cheaper and better option. For productivity, things start to get really interesting. You can pair the Vision Pro to your MacBook and pop out its display to make it bigger. Yep, no support for more virtual displays yet, but around it you can launch spatial apps from the headset. Microsoft 365, Zoom, Keynote, ChatGPT, the list goes on. Every profession that relies on desktops will be able to easily create their own personal workspace, expanding their cubicle farm further. Fingers crossed you'll be able to do the same on your phone, tablet and watch while tracking them in real time. I do miss it creating a portal for my keyboard and the Apple Pencil not being utilized. But who knows, maybe this will be Vision Pro's very first motion controller. 
What's annoying is that the headset does not save your app layout after a reboot. I do hope they will fix this so you don't have to each day manually rearrange your workspace. Vision proves that for product design, education, art, architectural stuff, presentations, fashion, editing, healthcare and trainings, it can make things more streamlined and accessible everywhere you go. Overall, I'm very excited to continue using it for productivity, especially when the comfort gets improved and can see how monitors are slowly on their way out. After a long day of being productive, you can jump straight into a session of mindfulness, a visually stunning experience experience that can only be appreciated. Using the headset does feel lonely sometimes. Besides receiving notifications, calling your loved ones and playing board games, there aren't any features or apps that allow you to go full co-op multiplayer with other Vision Pro users. That said, you may have already noticed that the headset's outward video screen displays waves of colors and sometimes even eyes. Green means you're FaceTiming, gray indicates you're recording 3D content and a flash is taking a snapshot, the purple haze shows you're occupied watching a movie or working on something and when you use the pass-through it will reveal your eyes in their full glory. The last being a subtle 3D effect that can only be seen from certain angles and uh, sometimes achieves real eye contact. It's not that well executed from a hardware perspective right now but despite its limitations I can envision how this tech could normalize wearing headsets to people on the outside side, making them more socially acceptable. What's crazy too is that the vision can be used to scan your face, turning it into an almost lifelike avatar. You do this by holding the headset in front of you. It's currently in beta, but promising nonetheless. I know the hair looks weird, uh, I got fake teeth and the skin looks a little tight, giving you slight NPC vibes. But after a few updates, I have already seen my avatar improve. You can fine tune it by choosing different filters and wearing a pair of glasses. Your persona is automatically integrated into apps such as uh, Zoom, Google Meet, FaceTime and Discord. When you call someone who owns a Vision 2, you can see their persona in full 3D and with the spatial audio, it gives a boost to their presence. My mom said she still likes the real me more, but hey, at some point she will not be able to tell the difference. Last, the Vision Pro is the first headset I've used that lets you capture 3D photos and videos. Watching them back feels like looking through a window into the past. It's beautiful and emotional at the same time to relive your most cherished memories, like they could jump out of their frame any second. This is a medium that is here to stay. Next to shooting these on the Vision, you can use an iPhone 15 Pro or higher too and instantly watch them in headset. I should not forget to mention that your regular library looks fantastic as well, especially panoramas which almost surround you, making you feel like you're standing right where you took them. So to wrap up this review, the Vision Pro shows us what our future lifestyle could be. For now it's mostly a tool for developers to build us this future and the lucky few wealthy early adopters that want to be on the forefront of experiencing it first. Before the Apple Vision can become something that everyone can afford, it has to become something that everyone wants, which are small form glasses. As much as I love gaming, the vision gets rid of the stigma of people thinking headsets are only for gaming. Personally, it, it feels like the market has finally matured. For years, hardware manufacturers, software developers and VR enthusiasts like you and me have tried to work towards the tipping point of the medium being ready for mass adoption. And uh, thanks to these efforts, Apple is now in the race. I expect more tech giants to follow in the upcoming years or so. Competition that will drive innovation, a rising tide that lifts all boats. We already seen the interest for the Vision Pro trickle down to other headsets like the Quest, which is amazing news for all of us. That's my review of the Vision Pro after using it for over a week. Let me know what you think of this headset. I'm very curious to hear if you're interested in trying one and if so, what would you want to use it for? Let me know. Until next time and um, bye bye for now. See you!